But I did tell you that we will still stay on the conversation around um, the fiscal policy, uh, and uh, we'll call it um, fiscal policy and tax reforms, and the challenges before the uh, presidential committee. We just finished speaking with Kenneth Rukume. Now we have um, Sam Iboni. Sam Iboni is an energy and investment solicitor joining us live in the studios right about now. Sam, so good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. It's really nice to be here. Yeah, it's a fantastic conversation we had initially, but then let's, let's continue from where we stopped. Um, what for you as a solicitor and um, energy uh, expert, so what for you are the concerns that the tax regime in Nigeria had posed? Well, um, as a lawyer and an investment solicitor, um, what we look for is what the tax uh, regime to support investment. And I think one of the biggest issues we have is that there are a lot of obsolete tax yeah. in our books. So everybody agrees that we need to reform the tax legislation. Because there are a lot of tax, a lot of obsolete tax. And we know that uh, the administration of tax has been tricky uh, in Nigeria. So for me, from a tax perspective, I think uh, it's very important. The need for the reform is there. And it's very important that uh, I'm very happy that uh, the government is giving not just lip service, but seems to have it at the front of the agenda. Um, I think uh, looking at the government since it uh, came into office, it's something that is very high on the agenda. And I think they have been hitting the right notes, you know, uh, removal of subsidy, uh, floating of the Naira. Then the executive orders, which uh, I don't think have gotten a lot of press time, mm. the removal of the 5% telecom tax, uh, you cannot bring in your luxury cars. Suspension you pay, of, um, those of tax, some those tax, yes, is, yeah. And the green tax has been removed, so you cannot bring one use plastic. So um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of gains on that side. Now, for me, as uh, an investment solicitor, I represent uh, most of my time as uh, I represent the business. But unlike the chairman of the reform, who is with PwC mm. and represents the big boys, most of my clients are in the mid and small scale uh, space. Yeah. Now, without uh, missing words, I don't think the big boys have problems with tax. Uh, why I say they don't have parent with tax? Because they already have PwCs, KBMGs, and the big four supporting them. And in Nigerian books, there are a lot of tax incentives, brand after tools, freedom, export free trade zones. So if you are a big player in Nigeria, an investor in Nigeria, you have a way get a, you get a way around tax. You know, there's capital gains. There are a lot of tax incentives. Yeah. There's, not, there's a lot of tax holidays, uh, even the oil industry, the LNG production, oh, manufacturing. Right, so there are a lot of there are a lot of um, there's a lot of vacuum, yeah. uh, right, and if you if you are able to navigate, you can take advantage of it. So, for me, Sam, I beg to interrupt at this point in time. You know, two things. First of all, you talked about hitting the right notes. Well, you say the president has been hitting the right notes since he came in, but it's been having a lot of pushbacks because it's not been fantastic for you know not the big boys like you mentioned just now for everybody in the street on me, on David, or I don't know about you, if there's been having some effect on you, please you let us know. But, so <laughs> then secondly, before, yeah. you, before, you, before you reply, please, um, the, the so-called big boys have an understanding of how the tax runs in Nigeria. And so they have people who are giving them advice on how to either take advantage of the loopholes or pay their taxes to avoid issues. But the woman who sells the tomato on the street, the person who works and has his, has his payee, the person who works in Nogu State and comes to Lagos State to work, some people don't, really don't have an idea of how this tax thing runs because of you know, the way the tax system has not been too viable like that in Nigeria. And that's why we have people like you here who can go give you expert opinion and help everybody understand what role they should play. But let's get your impression on the inauguration of this tax committee. You mentioned there's so many obsolete you know, tax laws in our books. What came to your mind? What are your expectations from this particular group? How good do you think it would do to the progression of taxation in Nigeria? Okay, so before I uh, talk about the composition of the group and the challenges they have ahead, I just wanted to address uh, uh, the, the comment you made. You know, for me, uh, it's, uh, government always has uh, people beating them and saying all oh, what they have not done well. And I didn't just want to go that route. So I just wanted to start off by saying at least there's some of the right notes they have hit. Now, every action has consequences. And even though they have hit the right notes, we all feel the consequence of it. Um, foil subsidy removal has meant that there's pain on us. In fact, uh, I didn't have the luxury of uh, coming here with my vehicle today. I had to couple with my friend because 
everybody is seeing how best to optimize the listing. So you can understand uh, everybody's feeling the pinch. Um, they floated the uh, Naira, and we all know where the Naira is today. Now, industries that had access to Naira at 490, all of them accountants and they are going over books because those profitable organizations from one day because of one policy have become unprofitable. So we're going to get people thrown in job market. We're going to get uh, lawyers might get uh, uh, liquidity, uh, liquidation and bankruptcy work to do and uh, business recovery. But you understand? So that is that. Then the, the optics about the executive order is also bad because for me, yeah, you are giving tax holidays to people to bring in luxury cars. Uh, you are giving tax holidays to people to bring in one-use plastic. And that has a knock-on effect on the economy. So for me, uh, as government, any choices you make, there's one, it goes one way or mm -hmm. goes the other way. Now, diving into the job that is set for the committee. Well, the job that is set for the committee is that the perception of government considering this list of events have, uh, have set up. And for me, this is the task committee is the major organizational uh, decision that the new administration has done. So it shows what their priority is. Now, the, it's the, about what? The revenue. Revenue, revenue to the federal government, yes. Yeah. Now, revenue to the federal government means that it's collecting revenue for me and you. Now, so it goes into the whole issue of social contract funding. We have gotten additional revenue uh, for the first subsidy. Where is this money going to? What is the amount? How is the accounting? So, mm. We are generating more revenue, but there's no conscious transparency on how this money is accounted for and how this money is spent. Mm. We, have, uh, we talked about uh, uh, forest subsidy and how much we, uh, we eroded. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about recovering it. So for me, uh, I think the uh, committee has their work uh, cut out for them. Um, I tried as much as possible to get a detailed list of all the guys in the committee, but uh, I think that there's a, a, an undergraduate uh, mm -hmm. 400 level economic student, president of the tax, Nigerian Students uh, Tax Association, who is on the committee. I think it's a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, uh, also helps the fact that she's a woman, she's young, she belongs to the millennium. So I think she has a big responsibility on her shoulder because she now has a voice to speak for, for that whole group. Whole group. What, what would you think could be a contribution of the millennium? on tax regime in Nigeria? Okay, for me, uh, what I think the biggest contribution which may, uh, which I am an investment solicitor, uh, a corporate market operator, and I have attempted to do self-assessment on the portal. Mm. And it's not as simple as straightforward as it is. And I still ended up uh, talking to somebody that is an expert and accountant to help me go through the loops of my uh, tax issues. So I think what the millennial will do on that committee is that she, for the fact that she's on that committee, she's going to bring in modern technology, she's going to bring fresh air, fresh thinking. So even though she might not be able to, maybe she's not even in the tax bracket herself, yeah. she doesn't understand tax, she's not probably producing, she's not productive, but because she's fresh, she has fresh ideas, uh, and she's of this generation, so like tools that they used to work, uh, have, she has a more open mind, uh, compared to analyze what they are doing in other countries, how to use technology, how to make technology simple, how to demystify de de tax. So for me, it's, uh, uh, I don't see anything wrong. Yeah. I think it's, it's something that we should, uh, uh, we should comment. Mm. Yes, and and uh, for her, there's a lot of responsibility on her shoulders because everybody is looking up to her to see how she does in that committee and holds herself up. Mm. Well, she'll do the best that she can while watching the adults do what they do and learn from them. Hopefully, well, I think she has done very well point, for herself for yes. uh, an economic 400 level student to mm. be the, uh, the president of the tax yes. association when they are accountants and mm. financial in the Nigerian University. She shows that mm. she's. Uh, uh, it's a tragic truth. Yes, she's yes. positive tragic yes. She's going uh, so through. So well. That's fantastic. But there are several issues uh, that uh, Nigerians are hoping, even the committee is hoping to bring solutions to and then implement. Um, I, I don't know if uh, a lot of issues around multipli multiplicity of taxes have come to your table because that's a huge, huge issue from, from small businesses, medium-scale businesses, even telecoms have come out to complain that this multiplicity of taxes is really killing us. Yes. So for me, uh, and I'm happy that uh, the profile of the chairman of the committee, he has done a lot of work with the uh, Economic Summit Group and the Economic Summit Group 
um, is the foremost private public sector Think partnership. Yeah. Yes. So he knows the issues. The issues around reforms that need to be doing, obsolete books, double taxation is there. Now, for me, I think we need to go, we need to step it back into policy. Um, what is the philosophy behind the tax regime? And for me, the sound bite I hear is that they want to make it more efficient, they want to collect more money. And I think that if you build a tax uh, administration and tax policy on that, you're going to run into trouble. Because I think tax should be a little more than that. Yeah. Now, why the government is giving the impression they are giving, uh, uh, they are going to be inventor, inventor, investor friendly. We know what that means. Investor friendly means they're going to get a tax break. So there is, the optics is not good. So there is the, that uh, optics that we are giving favors to the uh, foreign, foreign investors, investors and the big players economy, uh, and we are making uh, tax more efficient and uh, collecting more tax on this. Thing. So the burden of tax is going to be on the medium, small scale, and the individuals on the society. So I think that the committee needs to look at that optics and to be able to show that it's a fair and uh, a fair process. We all agree that uh, our tax administration needs continuous improvement. It needs to be better. Uh, with, the, with the quality of uh, work that our boys have done in fintech and the capability we have in Nigeria in terms of fintech, there's no reason why we cannot uh, integrate the NIA, BVN, mm. and the tax, uh, so, yeah, the tax numbers. Yeah, so I think that's the first thing that the committee should do. They should think of in, in, in integrating. Yeah, integrating. So, so you have one single data and one single source. And once you have everybody capturing the data, then it's easy to put over a tax break. Now, for me, uh, the opportunity that we have with tax should not just be about generation. I think we should get people on the tax bracket. But it's like, for example, instead of increasing uh, uh, salaries across the line, then you do tax to leave. But the guys are still captured. As the economy improves, the currency improves, then you can now start including people you, into yeah, the, the tax, into the tax, tax, tax bracket. So for me, I think the administration should be focused on capturing uh, that's about considering where we are in the economy and that the reforms have not started uh, receiving results, mm. then we should be in a hurry to collect tax and just focus on. Because the way it sounds now is that the performance of the tax reform next year will be how much more revenue they'll be able to collect. Yes. So I think the issue about generation, we should put a brakes on that. We all, for them, with administration, I think everybody is willing to take tax. Everybody is paying tax already. Maybe the market woman is not paying tax to federal government or legal state government, but there's one guy in front of the place that's collecting money which for is, her. Which is another concern that um, the tax regime has, has, which is another concern facing the tax regime. Because uh, if there's one guy by the, by the side uh, with one ticket that does not have a name or a number or that cannot be traced to mm -hmm. any agency of government, even, even, even on top of the ticket you see maybe local government yeah. council and all of that, and you pay a thousand dollars for parking your car by the roadside or for, for putting up a little shade to, to sell your body and the rest yeah. of that, how can we, you know, ensure that all of that is captured? For, for me, I think those are, those are loopholes. Those are loopholes that um, the tax regime, the tax reform should be able to look into and ensure that we don't lose all of that. Because here we are, we say we are losing, but somebody is getting Something. richer on that. Somebody is cashing into that lacuna that um, the lack of transparency, lack of accountability within the system had, had brought forward. Yeah, so I think very good point, and that goes back to uh, the work that I set up for the committee. And for me, uh, I think uh, other uh, subnationals and local governments have a big role to pay. Because like most things that happen, the committee writes its report, sends its recommendation, National Assembly does some laws. Recommendation? Yes. That's the, it. That's yes. where it ends. Yes. Recommendation. Yes. Then somewhere down the line, when it comes to implementation, then the state governments uh, start to down. shout to say, well, the, uh, we want to collect withholding tax. And this is, so for me, I think it, at this point is the time for collaboration. Not just collaboration with sub-nationals, but also uh, collaboration with the industry. Mm. So I think everybody needs to come together. And, um, what I found out with policy in Nigeria is that policy is usually compartmentalized. Mm. So we're talking about tax now. We don't be talking about tax. We don't see how it uh, affects agri. It doesn't see how it affects trade. Mm. It doesn't see how it affects education. It doesn't see how it affects health. So I think uh, the committee should expand their collaboration.
to all the sectors no, to I see mean, how I mean, they I mean, I've also spoken with Kenneth earlier. Mm -hmm. I think he, he tried to, he tried to explain to us the the mm -hmm. making up of the committee. Mm -hmm. He did talk about the fact that we have um, players from the sub nationals, mm -hmm. uh, the the states. Um, uh, revenue collection agencies are mm -hmm. part of it. Commissioner of Finance of every mm -hmm. state, part of the Joint Tax Board, mm -hmm. board is represented in that committee. So mm -hmm. it's going to be of all stakeholders. A, a stakeholders. Yeah. It's going to be a committee with a robust debate uh, on the way to go. So, so just maybe we might have a, a way forward. But then one concern that you raised, which I think uh, we should also stay on, is the data conversation. Data had been a major concern in Nigeria. We have been talking about data in this country for as long as we can remember. As we speak, we've not gotten anywhere. And that will be a big challenge for the committee if they listen to you and decide that, okay, let's look at how we can harmonize the data uh, for transparency and accountability before we begin to look at uh, generation, revenue generation. That could be a huge challenge. For me, uh, even in Lagos here, uh, uh, within uh, uh, our uh, vicinities, we have infrastructure that uh, private individuals have invested that can accommodate uh, data. A lot of guys have spent um, a lot of money investing in data. So in terms of the capability, I think we have it in country. Um, what we have found is that uh, all the attempts to uh, collate data yes. have been tough wars. So the banks want BVN, uh, somebody wants NIA, another person going to collect data for electoral, another person collects. So, it has always been pocket. Nobody, so everybody is collecting data for a specific purpose, and it has been territory. And so far, I think uh, the tax guys, because tax is something that cuts across every sector, have an opportunity. Now, even with the composition of uh, the committee, yeah. it also shows that it's focused on the finance and tax. Uh, this when they say stakeholder, it don't mean stakeholder broadly, because we have to respect that uh, 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 NIDA the IT infrastructure, communication guys should also be there. We should, every uh, sector says, has a, a law that says another company should pay one to contribution to this, the Nigerian content law. So everybody is... Uh, the about whole, revenue. Yes, so everybody is just about revenue, revenue. So I think this is an opportunity that we can reset. Let's just uh, start on a clean state and get everybody in the room. Because at the end of the day, if the focus is just to... Uh, provide friendly environment for investors and generate revenue, I think it will be a missed opportunity. And like you said, I can't agree with you more. I think uh, this is an opportunity to capture data and the committee should not miss the opportunity to integrate all the existing databases that we have, Electoral, BVN, NI, and all of them. And they also have their data because they too are insisting on yeah. uh, team. So the yeah. tax authorities are also in the game too. So there's team data, the CAC has their data, everybody has and no, 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 data speaking, yeah. uh, no, no, it's not speaking and integrating. And you know, they say data is the new oil. Yeah. So if we don't have data, how can we plan? How can we? So really, and that's why we have issues like uh, mysteries about paying uh, money to vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they have an opportunity uh, at this point to be able to, I say they have uh, the ear of the president and uh, it's our top on the agenda. They should use the opportunity to, to close the loop on data. Mm. And for Nigerians who are thinking it's business as usual, I think it's time for them to know that the train has left the station and it's already, you know, en route towards uh, gearing and shoring up revenue uh, according to what this administration wants to achieve. But before you came into the studio, myself and David were having a conversation around the tax morale of the citizens. You did mention now that uh, due to some accountability issue and the lack as it were, of transparency with the government. A lot of people are saying, this whole tax you want to collect us is like the case of um, killing the, the geese that lays uh, the golden the egg. egg. I wonder what your thoughts are about either punitive measures that we should be put in place for people who, um, intentional punitive measures, I must have to say, for people who misappropriate government funds, because these are the funds that Nigerians should be using in the first place. So people are saying, why do I have to pay you more taxes when somebody else is spending it lavishly doing something else that is not for the benefit of the nation. Do you think this should be also the responsibility of the, of the committee to say, Oga, in as much as you want to collect tax from these people, you also need to look into yourself to fix the broken pieces? You know, uh, I really uh, envy uh, the guys that got appointed on the committee. And I think the responsibility of them is enormous. 
tax goes to the root of the social contractuary. Yeah. Yes, and, and like you pointed out, the fundamentals are accountability and trust. Yeah. There is an accountability and trust deficit in Nigeria, and the committee has to fix it. Now, the thing about it is that our tax regime has not targeted productivity. Mm. Well, maybe we inherited it from the military administration where they went after uh, withholding tax and in fact. Uh, this is, so the whole idea is to go into your bank account, you got a payment of one million naira, a grab and two hundred and fifty thousand naira. So that has been taxation for Nigeria. So you can you, yeah, you can you can uh, you can imagine the distrust. And that's one. The second part about it is that there are very few people in the tax bracket. Mm. Uh, people that have it paycheck. People that are forced to deduct from source. Now, what the tax authorities have done is that it is a disservice to get into the tax bracket. Because once they capture you in the tax bracket, you get assessments and they throw all the tools at you. At you. So it's easier in Nigeria to be outside the tax bracket. You understand? And just you'll be safe. You'll be safe. Yes, and so I think that whole underlying philosophy, and that's why it goes back to the policy, the whole underlying philosophy that taxation should be aimed at uh, just revenue generation and not target uh, profit and productivity. I think that's a problem. Because Usually, the kind of tax we have now is that uh, an organization, uh, let me pick on any of the big uh, manufacturers, the kind of tax they pay now is tax that can easily pass on to the consumers. To the consumers yes. Because the tax does not, does not target their profit. Mm. So what they do is that they lump up, they lump up the cost, uh, this thing, reduce their company income tax, and pass the other tax to the consumer. So there is no efficiency. The tax is not targeted at profit. So most people are not, uh, so I think that whole idea of we should look at, it's like the uh, telecom tax is a good thing. Telecom is bringing in a lot of revenue, and I see why government wants to have a piece of it. But just taking a 5% overhead on telecom tax might not, for me, I don't think it's, uh, it's just increasing the cost burden. So you're just uh, passing the cost burden to the year. So the ordinary person in Nigeria, I think, with the current revenue focus tax is just bearing the burden of, yeah. of taxation. Yes, and so tax cannot be used as an incentive to encourage good behavior or uh, discourage bad be, uh, behavior. So I think that's, uh, that's a, a job that you have cut out from there to have to move tax from just revenue and to target uh, productive activity. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy we're having this conversation. You know, very key for me is the fact that um, we've, we've identified the trust deficit, we've identified the sincerity deficit within the tax the tax regime. But very importantly right now is the people that will be taxed. And then, um, uh, you know, when you talked about the fact that the government had, you know, hit the, the right notes initially, my something just, you know, cracked on my head. Like, um, right notes, moving for a subsidy, uh, businesses are closing up, people are losing their jobs, unemployment is on the rise, inflation is on the rise. And then here we are talking about taxation. And here you are telling me that, um, I mean, understanding that, yeah, it's all about a revenue drive. Are we taxing an unemployed society? The last figure we got was about 135 people went, were, you know, went into the poverty line in the last few months, or shortly after the first of the removal. Are we going to be taxing people that have been, you know, thrown into unemployment, thrown into poverty? Uh, in your line and none of that. So just maybe, okay. just maybe the conversation should be how do you make people get out of poverty so that they can conveniently and comfortably pay tax, which would ultimately benefit the entire system? Okay, so uh, um, I'll look at it uh, a little differently. Now, for me, uh, the biggest business entity in Nigeria is Federal uh, Ministry of Finance Incorporated. Government is the biggest business in Nigeria. How, how do you mean? Can you explain that? So Federal uh, Ministry of Finance has interest in all government entities, NMPC, discos, pipeline. And I think if you go like 18 trillion. So in terms of size, uh, the whole stock market is just like 50 something trillion. So in terms of size and capacity, government still has uh, government ownership, government agents. So we're talking about what they have left in public, uh, they, they see own the transmission lines, they see have 40% in these goals, they see have rail, chairway. so government still has a significant interest in business and the last administration tried to restructure it and get 
uh, become a little, put a governance structure around yeah. the way government uh, does business. So for me, uh, why I say they're hitting all the right notes is for who? They are hitting all the right notes to build federal government's revenue. Now, the intention is that maybe when the federal government has revenue, they can provide health, provide health well, and this. So they want to build up the warehouse. Mm -hmm. But for what I'm saying is that I have not seen that conscious uh, effort or those conscious uh, agencies or policies or organizations aimed at building these other uh, structures. Mm -hmm. So for me, why I say they are hitting all the right notes, yes, the average, uh, the, there's consequences for the decision. Mm -hmm. But Same. all the decisions, there's a, there's a goal. And the goal is simple increase government revenue. Now, if you look at uh, the president's uh, uh, past, because I think the best way to look at assess anybody is to look at his past. Mm -hmm. What he did in Lagos was increase Lagos revenue tremendously. And even when state, the federal government wasn't paying, Lagos state got to a point where it has generated yes. results. In fact, uh, uh, an organization like uh, the unions for road transport are generating like mm -hmm. $120 billion mm -hmm. annually, which is more than two or three states internally mm -hmm. generated revenue. Now, what they use it for is a different thing, how they use it for a different thing. So for me, that's what I'm saying, that's the point I said, to say, if you look at the policies consistently, mm. they are hitting all the right notes. Now, whether I agree that increasing government revenue should be the against, goal. It's against, a, yes, against the people. Yes, yes. it's a different thing. Mm. But like you said, taxation is a social contractoring. And the first thing that you need to do as Nigeria is to be able to get on the tax bracket. So I think that's where the committee's work is set up. So that this whole messaging that government is out there to just increase the revenue, should, they should be able to tamper it. Because that is the clear messaging we're getting from the federal government that everything, if you look at everything, is to increase government revenue and to give uh, a business friendly environment for investors. Mm. Yes, and so the optics is not good. So, in mm. one breath, you're smiling and providing tax holidays and support to some people, and in another breath, you're getting as much revenue and they are taking the bond mm. of your generation revenue. So I think that is that balance mm. that the tax committee needs to find a way to address. Yeah, there's a huge responsibility, responsibility for them to balance the skill uh, right there. So speak to the people that you, you, know, you normally have conversations with on these tax issues, the so-called you know, the small boys, the guys in the middle, yeah. the small businesses, and every other Nigerians on what they should understand about you know, this incoming tax reform. The big guys really understand what to do and know how to leverage your loopholes there. So if you were to or, or give orientation to Nigerians as regards you know, how to ensure that they're not on the wrong side of the law um, as this issue progresses, what would you tell them? So uh, uh, professionally, I'm not uh, allowed to uh, advertise as a lawyer. But what I would advise them is that anybody that has a business name or incorporated a company, this is time to clean your books. Get uh, an accountant or a chartered accountant to look at your books because going forward, every payment that you made will have an implication. And gone are the days where you have a business where you, you're, you think that the business uh, revenue is your personal revenue. You are going to have tax implications. So for every transaction you do, you need to understand what is the transaction um, put a description on it properly mm -hmm. and for tax purposes you need to get savvy you need to get mm -hmm. savvy so proactively prepare yourself because it's going to come because as soon as uh, the data is integrated anytime you make a payment to the bank anytime you register a company anytime you do any economic activity mm -hmm. the tax authorities are going to capture it and if you don't describe the activity mm -hmm. properly the tax authority will look at it as a profit and will give you a tax on it. So it's important at this stage that everybody that runs a business that has a bank account should be able to get a, an accountant to prepare proper books for him. So I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good season, even though there's unemployment and the economy is tough, but I think accountants and tax practitioners will uh, we'll smile to the bank. Yes, smile to the bank. <laughs> what are we not talking about? You just said it now. Why one smiles, <laughs> the other wants to fill in the brunt. Uh, uh, far sad. This is, uh, well, well, well it's, it's the reality. Yeah. It's the reality. But, but then, very key also is uh, what, 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 what level of technology do you think, hmm. are you foreseeing that um, the committee should recommend? Because it's important that um, if we're talking about harmonization, if we're talking about uh, uh, codifying, if mm. we're talking about um, 
uh, reform within the tax, the tax space. We're talking about data collection and all of that, then there must be some kind of um, technological input that sh the committee should be deliberate and intentional about. I think, uh, for me, uh, your technology for me is a, is a very uh, interesting topic. Um, I think that the technology, and that's what I mentioned about uh, uh, private uh, individuals that have capacity to store the data. I think that's the biggest issue, storage of data and properly um, to meet international standards. And we have a few institutions that do that. In terms of uh, programming, pro creating applications and that, we have the skill set. So the real issue is for the government to have the, um, the political will mm. to mm. make it happen. Now, these data already exist. Mm. The BN data maybe are stored somewhere in banks individually or stored in CBN. Mm. Uh, INEC has its own data stored somewhere else. Mm. Um, NIA stored somewhere in this. So I think the whole idea is for them to come up with a recommendation to say that some one entity yeah, will now have to pull all this data together and be responsible for, for, for this thing. That's the only way they will to coordinate it. So for me, is that political will to say that we need uh, national data and keep it and put all the things in place to have it done, even if it's a, a private uh, organization that's storing the data. But mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, that is the first thing first. We need to be able to make that decision that we have a professional uh, entity that should be able to store the data for us and we'll use the data collectively. Or until we have that data and apply that data, we will not, uh, uh, we have good, we have many, many laws. You understand? The question is implementing the laws. Mm. You understand? So, and the tax authorities will be able to make quicker and faster decisions if they have access uh, to those data. So that's the difference between the EFCC and the regular police because EFCC has uh, NFIU that has access to mm. data. Mm. data. So once you're able to provide uh, a database that the tax authorities have access to, you give them the training and uh, we should be able to get it uh, up and running. Would, would, you, would, you, would you recommend or do, do you see a possibility of having what people could term segmented form of taxation? What I mean by that is um, uh, Mr. A is a big boy. He, he, dry, he has a, a net worth of over over 300 million naira. He drinks champagne at will and all of that. And Mr. B is, uh, has, a, has a net worth of maybe 1.2 million naira. He lives somewhere in Agege and barely could drink um, bottled water. Do you see a possibility of having segmented forms of taxation? So, uh, for me, there should be no disincentive for being successful. You know, uh, so that's be, that's that's <laughs> that's punchy. Yes, there's no yes, there's no decision to be successful. So, and you see, that is where I think the administration is moving away from. So, what the last administration tried to do was to say identify luxury goods, uh, cars with above four uh, four liters engines would have an extra car. If you can buy a, a Maybach, then you can pay one or two more million. Uh, uh, to pay on, on custom. So that was the idea, and to generate revenue. So it's still going back to the whole aim was to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. But I think taxation should be more towards productive instead of tax attacking corruption. Because what we have now is that the tax authorities seem to be penalizing. Uh, no, not before that. So if uh, the nature of my business is that I hold cash, you yes, understand? Once they see cash in the bank, they tax it. But the tax, I might just have maybe 20 million in the bank. But the other guy has assets about 2, 3 billion. And he doesn't end up paying any tax. So for me, I think, and you have 2, 3 billion assets in uh, Ecoe. Next year, the valuation gets to 30, 30, mm. 30 billion. And the guy doesn't pay any tax on capital appreciation. Mm. But you're taxing me that has 20 million in the bank because you want to take, uh, somebody pay me 20 million, you want to take uh, uh, tax out of it. So I think the tax authority should move towards productive activities, value gain, profit, as opposed to just uh, revenue, just generation. revenue generation and taxing consumption. Transaction is easy to tax. Yes, sir. It's easy to tax. Yes, sir. So I think we should move away from, from uh, penalizing, uh, penalizing successful people. <laughs> well, 
that punchy statement uh, probably <laughs> might become something that everybody will pay attention to, so just like let the poor breathe. There is no disincentive for, uh -huh. for success, right? Or something like that. Let the rich breathe. <laughs> what a conversation, yeah. Sonia Iboni. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and to give your perspective on the, you know, the impending uh, tax reforms that Nigerians are looking forward to or not looking forward to seeing. Thank you once again for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. It was nice to be here.